Thank you, Brand, Lindsay. Thank you, Margaret. And for everyone who's been contributing and giving, our church, our community, working together uh, from our staff to you, we just want to say thank you. It's been amazing to see the generosity and the reach and how we're able to help so many people. So we are so grateful for you. It is good to be back and to share once again a message during the time that we're living in. And believe it or not, identity, our identity is something I want to talk about today. Our identity matters. It's who we are. It's what others know about us. Our identity is something that we have to have in order to be a citizen or to get into our bank accounts or to secure a loan. Identity is our name, our families, our heritage. And identities matter to us. To be known is so important. I'll tell you what's really weird is, is to know that you can go into a bank now wearing a mask covering up your identity. Or some of us, we need haircuts soon, otherwise we won't know who we're talking to or who we're seeing. Our identity is so important, you know, because it's who we are and how others know us. Well, Easter is a time where we celebrate Jesus' life on the cross and how he died, but also how he rose again three days later, and how hope resurrected and we are saved from sin and death. That's why we celebrate, that's why we celebrate Easter. But the resurrection continues to ripple into today. There's other things that the resurrection resurrects. And we learned last week that hope resurrected. That some things may appear dead, but they're not if Jesus is around. With Jesus, there's always a pulse. Well, there's something else that was resurrected through the life of Christ. Because of the cross and the resurrection, your identity, your true identity, my true identity has been resurrected. It can be known. We can know who we were truly meant to be. But do we know our true identity? And, and if we did, what would that mean for us? You know, right now we're living in a time where it's good to know who we are and more importantly, whose we are. For believers today, I want to reinforce the truth that you are a child of God and God is a good, good father and that he is going to take care of us through this COVID-19 pandemic. If you are not saved, if you have not put your faith in Jesus yet, it is really important for you to hear this message. And really for all of us, it's good for all of us to know who God meant for us and what comes with being a child of God. Because if we know our identity, it will change the way we view the situation we're in right now. So let me pray real quick for our message and our time together. God, we thank you. We ask, Lord, for all distractions to just go away. Help us to hone in and hear your word and hear what you have to say for us. Speak to all of us, whether we're Christian or not. God, I pray you would speak and move in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. What's our true identity? Well, in order to figure out who you are, you have to know whose you are. In order to figure out who you are, you have to know whose you are. Well, here's the thing. You were created by God. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says this. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Your true identity is what your creator thinks and says about you. It wouldn't make sense and it wouldn't be right for a customer to tell the creator of a cell phone or some other device what it is. It wouldn't be right for a customer to say, this is what you should name it and, or this is how it should work and this is what it should do. Although that's kind of cool to as customers to say, you know, recommend things and that's, that's fine. But in this case, whoever creates something, they get the, the right to say what it is, what it does, what its name is because they took the time to make it. Well, it's the same thing with us. The creator, God, gives his creation name, a name. He gives us a meaning. He gives us purpose and characteristics. So what God says and thinks about you matters the most. And it's because we believe as, as Christians that God created us. 
So whatever he wanted, whatever he thinks, whatever he says about his creation, it matters more than what we say, what anyone else says. And we bear, we carry, in other words, we reflect the image of God. We're image bearers of God because he created us in his image. His fingerprints are on us. Jesus was the blueprint, or another way to look at it, the inspiration for creating all of mankind. It was through Jesus that everything was created. This is what Colossians 1, 15 through 17 says. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. And he made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Wow, that is a powerful description of Jesus. So we were created and inspired through Jesus. He was there at the beginning of creation. And here's the thing. You were created to be in relationship with God, not away from him. You were meant to fellowship with him. And this means that you actually do belong to God. But here's the thing. Just like today, our identity can be stolen. Well, our identity was stolen. Sin has stolen our identity. Sin has made us lose our true identity. The consequence of sin in the garden with Adam and Eve was separation from God. And this fellowship that was severed, it caused a ripple effect into our lives and everyone else. Over time, humanity became more and more distant. We became more and more confused of who we are. And it makes sense because if you're not with your creator, you begin to lose yourself and lose who he says you are. And so that's kind of been this ripple effect throughout humanity as sin has caused us to not know our true identity. And the more we're led away from God, the least we know about him. But God, this is crazy, but God in his grace, his grace means undeserved favor or another way to look at it is undeserved help. Like we weren't even looking for his help. We didn't, we didn't necessarily deserve it, but he helped us anyway. He chose to call Abraham his own people, his own child. He chose Abraham and through his own family line to be his people. We know them as the Israelites or the Jews. They would be a blessing to all their nations. The promise was that through Abraham, that the people of Israel would be a blessing to every nation through the line of Abraham. And so through this line, God would resurrect and restore the relationship he intended from the beginning in the garden with all of humanity. Through this family line would be born the one person who could resurrect our true identity and restore and reconcile our relationship with our creator and his name is Jesus. It was through him. It is through this God choosing a people to, to start saving us. And it was his plan all along. So our true identity is actually resurrected through Jesus. If you remember last week when I said that my daughter kept watering a dead plant and sure enough, this, this new plant started rising up out of the soil. Well, did you know that Jesus was also prophesied about that same exact thing? That he would be a new shoot, a branch coming out of the stump of Jesse. Here's what Isaiah 11:1 1 says. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. The family line of Abraham led all the way to King David and there wasn't much left to King David's uh, line. There, there was nothing much except for like a stump. His, his family line and, and his Davidic kingdom, his heritage was like cut down like a stump. It was dead and it didn't look good. But it was prophesied that a king whose rule would never end would come from David's line. So this prophecy was is that there would be this ruler who would never stop being on the throne. But it's kind of hard when there's a dead stump. It's kind of hard to see or have hope that that could actually happen. 
And it looked like that his glorious kingdom had come to an end until Jesus was born. So I know we're not, it's not Christmas time, but this scripture connects to us today because it was when Jesus was born that that new shoot rose up out of the stump of Jesse that appeared to be dead and appeared to be done. And prophecies were fulfilled. And here's what we know in Colossians 1, 19 through 22, that through Christ, we all have been given a chance, a second chance, forgiveness, to be reconciled, to be restored, for us to be saved from our sin and to resurrect who we truly are, who we were always meant to be, and that's children of God. If we believe and accept the work of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, our relationship with God is resurrected and restored as well. Only Jesus can restore our true identity. And for us who have been believers for a long time, your identity is not in this world. It's not in, in what you do or what you own. It's who your creator says you are. So who are you? Who are you? I was reading the Bible and I was reading through Peter and 1 Peter, 2 Peter. I was reading Ephesians again and I saw some things that were just amazing to read. And I want to read to you what Peter and Paul tells their Christians, their churches. He, they were reinforcing their true identity, reminding them who they belong to, reminding them where they came from. And this is what Peter says to the church, to all the churches spread out in his first letter. He says, you are a chosen people, a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity, can you imagine that? You had no identity. You didn't know who you are, who you belong to. Now you are God's people. That's awesome. The, the God of the universe, they belong to him. He calls them children. They call him father. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. So Peter is talking to the Gentiles who were not the Jewish people. The Jewish people are the chosen people of God. But now we're hearing about that, that promise to Abraham that all people will be blessed, that all could be included into the family of God through Jesus. This is it. Peter's saying, you also have been chosen. You also have been included in. Of course, the stipulation is if you believe in Christ. Paul said similar things in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. He said, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So before God even made the world, he already determined to include even the Gentiles, anyone who would believe to be his chosen people, his own family. God decided in advance, verse 5, to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus had to pay for all mankind's sin so that all mankind could come to God. It's amazing. And it gave him great pleasure to do this, the Bible says. So we're all adopted. We all have the opportunity to come into the family of God. And I love what Paul says later on in the same chapter. He says, God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. This spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. The purchase he means there is Jesus' death on the cross paid for the penalty of our sin so that we could be known again, so we could be claimed. He did this so that we would praise and glorify him. Wow. This is an important takeaway. You're not lost or unwanted. You're not lost or unwanted. God claims you as his own precious possession. We are reclaimed as children of God. I love that word reclaim because we've always belonged to God, but God had to take us back because of what sin did. We always belong with him, but we have to believe this and we have to come home to God. He was willing to come down himself in Jesus Christ and say, here I am. I love you that much. I'm here. Come home. Believe in me. We must do that. 
This all hinges on one thing. Whether you're claimed or not hinges on one thing. If you are in Christ. If you are in Christ. By putting our faith in Christ, you are saved and restored. By putting your faith in Christ, you are in Christ and your new identity has changed and you're reclaimed. Now, I know I just gave you a ton of like historical evidence here and historical connections throughout the Old Testament to the New. But I did that on purpose. You understand from the beginning of time, you were always meant to be with God, but sin severed that. It hurt it. It damaged it. Sin stole our identity. Sin caused us to lose who we truly are. And, it, and of course, it makes sense. The more we turn away from God and look away, the more we don't believe in God or, or know him, the harder it is to know who we truly are. Because we believe and we stand on the conviction that God created us. So I wanted us to understand that before I start applying it to today. But there's something amazing about the benefits of knowing God is your father, your creator, and that you are his children. And here, here's one of them. We can actually know our creator personally. We can personally know our creator. It's important that we understand the value of being able to, to, to know our creator in a personal way. If we can talk to our creator, we can know him more. And then we can know ourselves and, and why we are here and why he made us and what we're supposed to do. Just think about that, being able to talk to your creator and go, so why am I here? And what's your purpose? And what's the meaning of my life? And where am I going? What's my destiny? I think that's really comforting to know that. And what's amazing is we can. Yes, right now the scriptures is all we have. The scriptures is what we have. But his spirit also comes into us as we read earlier in Ephesians 1. Helping us understand the inheritance and that we belong to God. His Holy Spirit presence comes into us. But I love Colossians 1. It's been one of my favorite scriptures of all time. Uh, and it keeps just continuing to be my favorite because it says in verse 15, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. And then also says in 19, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. So we can know God personally because we can know Christ and we can study his life and see what he's all about. And whatever we see in Christ, we see God. And so that's amazing that through Christ, we have this personal relationship with this creator of this universe. And if that's the case, then we can start to figure out who we truly are and who we're meant to be. So that's been resurrected through the life of Christ. The hopes of actually knowing what's the point of being here and, and why do I exist and what am I supposed to do with my life and how do I even handle a COVID-19 pandemic? And I love this. Since we know whose we are, we know what we can handle. Since we know whose we are, we know we can handle 1 John 4.4 4 says this, For greater is he who is in you, that's God, than he who is in this world, Satan. Greater is God who is in you than he, Satan, is in the world. God is greater and he's in us if we believe in Jesus Christ. His spirit comes in. The power of the resurrection, the spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, we read it last week, lives inside of you. Romans 8 says that. So God is in you, and he's greater than any spirit or any power in this world. Romans 8, 28. I mean, this is all because of the identity in Christ. This is what it says. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. Wow. One of the scriptures that just resonates with me is Romans 8, 31 through 39. I'm going to read it. It's that powerful. I got to read the whole thing. It says, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? And that's the truth. God is for you. As a follower of Christ, as a believer, he is for you. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Wow. Think about that. I mean, he gave up Jesus to help pay for the penalty of sin and death. Won't he also give us everything else? Yes, he'll give us hope and he'll give us identity. He's still resurrecting things in your life. He's still showing you things. And then it says in verse 33, who dares accuse us from whom God has chosen for his own? 
God chose to bring everyone in, and all those who believe are his chosen ones. No one for God himself has given us right standing with himself. No one. The answer to that question, who dares accuse us? No one. For God himself was given us right standing with himself. He made us righteous. He made us holy and blameless through Jesus. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us, praying for us, interceding. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us, loves us if we have trouble or calamity? Listen, we're going through trouble and calamity. And this is what Paul says. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we're going through that? Or if we're persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No. No, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love us. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. So we are victors. God loves us. And even when we're going through difficult times, that doesn't mean he doesn't love us. We are overwhelming victors through Christ Jesus. And I am convinced that nothing, this is verse 38, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky, above or in the earth, below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. His love is that great that it permeates and breaks through anything. And there's nothing you can do that wouldn't stop you, stop him from loving you. He loves you that much. All the more reason to come home to him. All the more reason to repent of sin or to to acknowledge that you need him and to come home because that's the kind of love you're going to get. He'll never stop loving you. The question is, is will we love him? And for us as believers, will we return to our first love? Will we love him? Because that's the kind of love he's showing us. Will we show him that kind of love that will never stop loving him no matter what goes on in this world, no matter how many difficult things we go through because we love our father for what he's done for us too? Will we have that kind of love? But that's the kind of love we have. That's the father that we have when we know our creator and we know him personally as our father. Wow, that's so good to know right now. So good to know. There's so many other things about being a child of God. So many other benefits too. So many other blessings. And I'm excited about this. And you can repeat after me, okay? If you're, if you're in your house and it's not too awkward, you can stand up. You can stand up, stretch your legs real quick because we're going to declare some things about who we are in God. If you, have a, 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 if you have a faith in Christ, if you are saved, this is who you are. And so we're going to say these things together. And, uh, and if you don't want to, that's fine. They're going to be on the screen for you. Here's, here's the first one. We are not lost. We are found. We are not dead. We are alive. We are not orphans. We are home. We are not alone. We are held. We are not abandoned. We are wanted. We are not forgotten. We are remembered. We are not overlooked. We are seen. We are not forsaken. We are claimed. We are not condemned. We are loved. We are not a mess. We are a masterpiece. We are not anxiety. We are confident. We are not depressed. We are joyful. We are not worthless. We are priceless. We are not defeated. We are more than conquerors. We are not guilty. We are are not guilty. We are forgiven. We are not of this world. We are holy. We are not slaves. We are free. We are not destroyed. We are eternal. We are not alone. We are family. We are not dispensable. We are essential. We are not replaced. We are precious. We are not shaken. We are secure. We are not fearful. We are peaceful. We are not surprised. We are eagerly waiting. We are not clueless. We know the future. Amen. Amen. Man, praise God. This is what we have. Let's give God glory and praise right now. This is who we are because of who God is to us and who God is, period. And then because he claims us as his own prized possession, priceless possession, he calls us one of his own children. He calls us sons and daughters. All of this 
is what we have if we have faith in Jesus Christ. What do we have if we don't have Jesus? Think about that for a second. There is no hope. There is no hope if there's no creator. There is no hope if we don't have a God who's prepared a place for us. And what's amazing is, is there's another benefit to knowing your God, your creator, to knowing your true identity. We not only know our true identity, we know our destiny. We know our destiny. We know our true identity and with it comes our destiny. And so no matter what's going on around us right now, we know where we're headed. I love that one point. We're not surprised. We're eagerly waiting for the, for the times where God comes back. We're not clueless. We know the future. The Bible tells us in Revelation what's coming. The Bible tells us in other places what's coming. God loves us so much. He gave us a heads up of those things. And, and what we do need to know, he has told us because he's a loving father. And he made a way for us to spend eternity with him. The Bible says he's going to prepare a place for us. And there's tons of room. There's plenty of room for us. He wants you home. You were created by God. Sin messed it up. And he wants you home because he's made a way when you put your faith in Christ. Let me wrap it up all with this. Your identity matters. Identity is who you are or how others know you. Your true identity comes from God, but sin stole or caused us to lose who we truly are, who we were truly meant to be. The only one who should have say in who we truly are is our creator. And in order to figure out who you are, you have to know whose you are. You are God's creation. And when Jesus died and rose again for you, he made a way for you to come back. He was claiming you back and calling you home. And he wants you to be more than just his creation. He wants you to be his son or daughter. He wants you to be one of his children. When our identity is resurrected, so is our understanding of who we truly are, who we were always meant to be, and all the blessings that come with being a child of God. Because I know who God is, I know what I can handle. Because I know who God is, I know my destiny. I'm good. I'm safe. I'm taken care of. I'm provided. Because God is faithful. God is good. I don't know who you are and who's watching right now. But you're being called home. If you've never known that God is your creator or never believed that, if you've never believed that Jesus has come to save you and forgive you of your sin, and then to lead you to live a holy and pure and righteous life, he is able to do that. You are not your sin. You are God's child and he loves you and he's calling you home. I'm praying that, that through this message, you're seeing who you were always meant to be, the potential of who God called you to be, who God created you to be. We're, we're really just, we're not really being who we're supposed to be. <clears throat> and that kind of stinks because have you ever, have you ever owned a, a device or some kind of product and you had no idea it could do all these other things because we didn't know what the creator was meant, intended for it? And we look in the manual like, oh, wow, my, my phone can do that. I had no idea. Or my TV or computer or, or my car can do that. You see, the more we understand who God is and, and who we are in him, wow, the more we, we see the potential that we have here on this earth, the more we can handle, the more power and understanding of getting through this COVID-19 pandemic. But what's, what's worse than this is, is what's to come in the end. And so be ready, be ready. So today, if that's you, I want to encourage you to say just right now where you are in your home with your mouth or whisper to God and say, God, I, I need you. I believe I am a child of God. I believe I'm, I'm your creation. And I, I accept the forgiveness. I believe in what Christ did for me on the cross and how he rose again. And I accept that forgiveness. And I accept my place in the family of God. Just say those things to him today. And if you do, that's a prayer from your heart. You know, that's you talking to God from your heart. And if you do, would you go to our website and let us know at calvarydover.org and click on connect with us and tell us that decision that you made because we want to help you in your journey. So let me pray for us as a church. Your identity resurrected. 
your true identity resurrected. So now you know who you truly are, uh, what you can handle, and how to live in this world. I'm excited to talk more about what else resurrected next week. Let me pray for you all. God, I thank you so much for helping us see what you always meant for us to be. God, we acknowledge that things didn't turn out the way you intended it. And that was our decision. That was our choice. But we also acknowledge that, God, you did a lot to bring us back to who we truly are and to bring bring us back into being in your family. And God, thank you for showing us today who we are so we know how to handle what's going on. God, we are so comforted in knowing that all those things about you is what we inherit as well. God, we thank you that you are love and you are joy and you are peace, but you're also holy and you're also just and you're right and true. And so everything about you, we are becoming. It's who we are supposed to be too. So God, we want to line ourselves up with every part of you, knowing that you are our God, our creator and our father. We want to honor you and thank you with our lives and live for you. And God, we take comfort in knowing that through this time that we're going through in this world, that we know our destiny. We're not surprised. We're aware of our future. And you got this. And we can be confident that we're going to be okay and that you're going to provide for us and take care of us. So we thank you for these truths today. Thank you for bringing us back and reminding us of who we truly are. We come back to you today, God. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in today and for hearing my heart. Most of all, hearing the word of God coming out today. I pray that your day is blessed and that um, you have an amazing time in your family. We love you guys. We miss you so much and we hope to see you soon.